In this video, I'll introduce you to kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is the energy of motion. It can be written down simply enough for a particle. It is one half times the mass of that particle times the speed of the particle squared. And well, that's simple enough. But you may think, uh, are things really that simple? Well, in this case, they kind of are. If you look at a mass as four kilograms going at five meters per second, I can just plug those numbers into my formula and calculate my kinetic energy is 50 joules. Joules is the unit of kinetic energy. As you can see, mass, speed squared, it has units of kilograms, meters squared over second squared in SI. It is also equal to a newton times a meter, since a newton is a kilogram meter per second squared. It's really handy to use proportional reasoning with kinetic energy because it's so simple. If the mass goes down by a factor of 2, energy goes down by a factor of 2. It'd go 50 to 25. If the speed goes up by a factor of 2, then the kinetic energy goes up by a factor of 4. It would be 50 joules to 200 joules. If both happened, then you'd have down by a factor of 2, up by a factor of 4, up by a factor of 2, you'd go from 50 joules to 100 joules. That speed squared really does have a big effect. Here I've taken the mass up by a factor of two and a half, the speed down by a factor of two and a half, but the total kinetic energy goes down from 50 joules to 20 joules. A couple more things about kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is a positive scalar. So it's a scalar, mass is a scalar, and speed is a scalar. That's a magnitude of the velocity. It's also always positive. Mass is positive, and again, you have speed squared. So if you ever end up with a negative kinetic energy, you know you've calculated something wrong. The final point, which I don't think a lot of students realize, is that kinetic energy depends on the coordinate system because it depends on your velocity and speed, which itself is measured relative to a coordinate system. For example, what is the kinetic energy of this book? Well, it's sitting here on a bed. I establish a coordinate system that's fixed relative to the room, and it's at rest. Its speed is zero, so its kinetic energy is zero. However, this room is on the Earth, and the Earth is going around the Sun at about 30,000 meters per second. Here I have a coordinate system fixed to the Sun, and now that book is also moving at 30,000 meters per second in this coordinate system. If I calculate its kinetic energy, then it has 1.5 times 10 to the 8, or 150 million joules, measured in a coordinate system fixed relative to the sun. Well, the sun is moving in the solar system. Here I have a coordinate system fixed relative to the center of the solar system. And the earth is moving in the solar system at a speed of 200,000 meters per second, which means the book, at least a one significant figure, is moving at that speed too. I can calculate the kinetic energy, which is 10 to the 10 joules. All right, that's kind of absurd, but if you keep this in mind, I think it will help you remember that kinetic energy is not an absolute quantity, but a relative quantity. It depends on the coordinate system in which you are measuring the velocity. And that harmless book that is just lying on your bed, measured in a coordinate system fixed relative to the center of the solar system, has the energy of two tons of TNT.